Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a dynamic validation list. So what I'm going to do is create a short list of courses that I'm then going to get a data validation list to look at. So I'll just do four items like that. And then I'll get myself into this cell, color it yellow. So that's what I'm going to do on my list. So data validations on the data tab and then over on the right there, validation comes up with this box. I'm not going to bother with the input message and the error alert, but you can add those. I just basically want to go through this list option and select that list. That's the list that I want to appear in my validation list. Click OK to that. And hey presto, it does. So it fits in there. You can select from your list. Now the problem with doing it like that is if you add another item, so if I add project, for example, project is not in that list, I would have to go into data validation and repoint it to pick that project up. So what I want to do is show you how you can avoid having to do that. That does work, obviously, there's project. But you can set it up so that automatically will add new items that appear at the bottom of the list. And this is what you have to do. So if I just click over here somewhere, pick a different color so you can see where I'm at. So I do a data validation list there, but before I do it, I'm just going to highlight this. Go to home and format it as a table. Now these are just different styles. I'll just pick any old table. It selects that list and it says, does your table have headers? Mine doesn't because I should have put a title at the top there. In fact, I will do. I'll put course courses. This could be on a different sheet, probably would be on a different sheet. And then if I click on that again and pick green, mine does have a header. And then that becomes the header. And you can do filters on that if you want, as you would expect with normal filters. But now watch what happens if I use this as my list. So if I go to this cell, go back to data, select validation, and select list again. This time I'm selecting the table like so. Clicking OK. So that table list is there, project being the last one. If I type Visio on that list, Visio adds itself on the bottom and picks up the same format. And when I go back into there, Visio's already picked that up. Formatting as a table is, is useful for this, but it's also useful for a few of the features as well. For example, the take function, if I just put some um, figures there, some budget figures there. So if I just put cost or something like that, and just um, type some figures there. So one, two, three, two, three, like that. Just fill them in. So now if I get myself um, to get the take function to look at this so it can take the last three items off this list, I'll just format this to pounds. And I'll just come over here and do the take function. So equals take. So this replaces the offset and count A functions. Selecting this table. And then comma. And I want to do minus three. I want the last three off the bottom there. And then I'll just tick that. And it'll drop the last three in. So if I just copy these labels. Copy and paste those over there. So I've got some labels. It's not formatted as a table. It's also not formatted as pounds, but I can do that. Now, if I add um, something else under there, so like, um, can I do that calc, C-L-C-K, calc? It's picking that up, and whatever I do, it's going to pick that up. It's always going to pick up the last three. So you can then base, like, a little chart on that. Insert chart. A lot smaller than that. And this will always pick up the last three items, whatever they are. Now, if I did this, if I copy this table, just copy it and just stick it there for a minute. And then set it so it's not formatted as a table. So I'm just going to right click on this one and go to table and convert it back to a range. 
yep so that's no longer formatted as a table and I'll do the same sort of thing so I'll just sit there and do the take function so equals take pressing tab to get the bracket on it highlighting the table copy no, not copy comma minus three so exactly the same it'll give me the last three which is great but then if I add another one so if I put base there and then put some figures in it hasn't picked that up it hasn't picked the bottom figure up this has to be formatted as a table for it to do that if I right click on it it's not formatted as a table I've got no option there if I go up to the top and format format it as a table okay and then do it so if I just pull this down like so this will pick it up now it's not looking at that table at the moment so if I, I will have to select that again again this this has got a name so I could so it's only looking at that top bit but if I highlight all of it it will pick it up so now it's picking up base base and if I put impress at the bottom oops press tab and then put some figures in there it's going to pick that up so you have to format it as a table um, the reason the color scheme is max uh, different is because it's remembering the green from before so if I want this to be the color I selected I would have to say no fill from the manual one and then it picks up that color scheme from the one that I selected which was that one so that's all I want to talk about in this little video how you can have first of all a dynamic validation list and just so you know these validation lists you can have up to 30 over 32,000 items in that list the actual width of what you can actually have in characters is restricted to about two five six characters but it's still a massive amount of data you can have in a list and um, that's but that's all i want to talk about in this little video so hopefully it's of use thank you for your time and i'll catch you on the next one